All right. And we are just, uh, we are now recording. And uh, Tessie, do you, uh, the, our speaker today, I'm sorry, is uh, Tessie Torres, and she's from University of Texas, El Paso. And she's going to be uh, presenting, we are not playing around using gamif gamification to create a winning OER staff team. Thank you so much, Denise. Uh, thank you all for, for joining today's uh, session with me. As you can see, I have a game on the screen. You're welcome to play along. You can uh, head to joinmyquiz.com in your browser um, and enter the game code. I see uh, we already have a participant. Thanks, Sabrina. Um, if you'd like, you can answer questions in the chat, um, I, uh, however you feel comfortable. I uh, will go ahead and get started. And if you'd like to join, um, the game code will be at the bottom of the screen as well. So um, you should be able to join at any point. So um, feel free to also throw into the chat, what is the worst professional development you've ever attended. I'll tell you a little bit about mine. Um, it was just one slide on the screen, on the projector. Um, one presenter who stayed behind the podium didn't engage us. Um, I'll have to admit that the subject matter was a little boring. <laughs> um, it was very useful. It was very important, but it was uh, monotonous and not very fun. And I have to admit that towards the end, I can't really tell you that I learned anything from the session. It wasn't until I started actually doing the task that uh, everything kind of came back to me. And that's not something we want to do when we're engaging in professional development. We want the development itself, the workshop, to be very, very useful. So we'll go over that in today's uh, presentation. So um, unfortunately, my co-presenter Angela had a family emergency and she won't be able to join us. I will be uh, talking about her points a little bit later on, but I do want to introduce myself. My name is Tessie Torres. I do use she, her pronouns. I am the OER librarian out of the University of Texas at El Paso. Angela is uh, not only the scholarly communications librarian, but she's also department head of research and instruction. Uh, together, we champion OER and affordability on campus. We know that OER is just a small portion of what affordability and accessibility mean to our students. And we are looking to champion all of that, everything that it entails here at UTEP. And of course, we're always looking for fun and innovative instructional methods. And just because you have a big person job, a salaried job, that doesn't mean that all fun for you stops. So that's something we'll explore today. Um, I will be looking at two different, very different professional development workshops. We have STAR and we have OWLS. Uh, we'll go into what those are. We're going to look at the gamification concepts, what the foundation is of gamification and how you can incorporate that. And uh, like I said, incorporating that into workshops, not just into classrooms if you're teaching information literacy to students, but how you can translate that to your staff as well. So I'm going to ask a question. You can ask it or you can answer it in um, the game or through chat, but is there something that you're really excited for us to touch on? And if uh, I don't have it prepared in my slides, I can certainly touch on it um, afterwards. All right, thank you, Amanda. Improving student and faculty engagement, definitely. Yes, wonderful. How to engage meaningfully in the games. A game just to have a game, just for fun's sake. Um, Again, it could be a good tactic to break the ice maybe, but uh, I like that you use the word meaningfully. That's really important, thank you.
Wonderful. I'll take a look if anyone's throwing anything in chat. Okay. Awesome. So, um, Beth, thank you for your question. As you can see, I'm using a tool now. It's called Quizzes, Q U I Z I Z Z dot com. Um, I incorporated slides as well as questions, polls, multiple choice. And so this is going to be one way that you can incorporate a game, how you can create that. Practical application. Mm -hmm. And uh, Kate, how it's accessible. Uh, definitely. I think uh, something that I touch on as the OER librarian is accessibility means uh, two different things. And both of them are very important to the world of open ed. Number one, can I get to it? And number two, if I have any type of uh, physical or uh, learning disability barrier, um, am I still able to learn from it? Wonderful. Um, I have found that uh, gamification uh, engages different parts of the brain. Uh, and so, and this is I'm not rooted in science at all, I should say. Um, I'm not a, a psychologist, but I have found when I use gamification, even in info literacy sessions with students, um, those faculty members come back to me and say, this student who I've had issues with, this student who uh, wasn't grasping concepts, once I started incorporating gamification, like what you did, it really um, boosted their participation and their grades. So awesome. Thank you so much for, uh, for responding. I'm gonna go ahead and move on. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about the before Tessie era. Uh, we call it BTE here. Angela, like I mentioned, was the scholarly communicationist. That was her sole focus. And uh, she didn't have the support of a SCALCOM team, really. So she was managing all aspects of SCALCOM. Um, so she created something we call STAR. Uh, I do have a quick disclaimer from her. STAR was a fancy name that we came up with after the fact. Um, and it's because we were referring to owls and she felt hers was boring because it was just called the OER training workshop. That's how it was marketed to the librarians. So back in 2019, OER was very new to the UTEP campus. And Angela was charged with being Miss OER. Uh, there was also an initiative called the Teach Tech uh, that was a grant incentive where 19 faculty members uh, were given $3,000 for either conference or technology uh, to incorporate OER into their classrooms. They would be partnered with a librarian. Uh, this is something that Angela knew was in the works. She needed to prepare her colleagues at the time to really uh, get going with OER. Uh, so as you can see, it set the stage for the librarians to be introduced and in working with OER. So it was a live workshop. She delivered OER bites, uh, quick pieces of information about OER uh, that was delivered to them. She briefly checked the recall uh, of what our, the colleagues learned from OER bites. But the meat and potatoes of that workshop was they were given an actual syllabi, a real syllabus, uh, and all of our colleagues are subject specialists. So they are given certain areas that they uh, help with research and uh, faculty members and so on. So Angela gave them a syllabus that pertained to one of their subjects and they were tasked with assume that this faculty member completely wants to start with a zero cost OER class. So curate options and replace all of the material. She walked them through how to search 
uh, in the different OER repositories. So OER Commons, Merlot, OpenStax, and then they had to present their findings. Uh, because everyone was focused on a different portion, a different syllabus, not all the answers were exactly the same. So she would call on certain librarians to come to the front and present on what their process was. Um, let me see. So there was no group work involved in this. Um, and it was a one shot instruction to her colleagues. So I'm going to ask everyone here, how useful does this sound based on your current needs? Okay. And of course you can elaborate in the chat if you'd like. And I'm assuming that it could be uh, those of you who put useful or somewhat useful, you might be a little bit further along in the OER process, the affordability process on your campus. And uh, I'm, again, assuming that the one who put not useful at all, you might be at the very beginning of your process. We'll give it a little bit longer. Uh, I was actually not expecting this. Um, I'm seeing no one responded very useful. Um, and so I maybe afterwards we can engage in a discussion as to why not. Um, but this is very interesting. Thank you. I'm going to move on to the next question. Um, does this sound any fun? to you guys, and please be honest, our, our feelings were, would not get hurt. All right, we seem to have gotten a, a wide range. Okay, Kristen would have put very useful in the last um, slide, okay. All right, okay, so we have a wide range of results here. Um, so that, thank you for your feedback. Uh, one more question. I'm going to ask what gamification means to you all. Awesome. Different way of learning, sure. Earning recognition, okay. I like that answer. Wonderful. Uh, 
perfect. All right, I'm going to move on to the next slide. Thank you again for your responses. Um, so we're going to enter what we call the Tessie era. Uh, I was brought on as the OER librarian at the beginning of 2021. So uh, January of 2021. And I really started uh, hitting the ground running. And it's because I had to. Angela had made quite a bit of progress uh, or gaining momentum here on campus with OER. And so when I came in, it's because she really needed the help. and. I had to pick up OER as I went. Uh, very scary if any of you are OER champions uh, on campus. It's like coming in and at the middle of the luncheon and you got to catch up. So uh, that's what I was doing. And when I was talking to librarians, because OER had gained so much momentum due to Angela's work on campus, I was noticing that librarians were having trouble having pretty basic conversations with faculty members, answering very basic conversations with them, very basic answers, I should say. And I realized that we needed to really build up that foundational knowledge. Um, they demonstrated that they were not comfortable with terms. They were not comfortable having these conversations with faculty members, even though I knew that Angela had gone over some of that foundational information. I wanted to prepare staff to have uh, those introductory conversations. And I let them know, I am the OER librarian. This is my job. It's my job to have that higher, uh, those higher conversations. But when a faculty member comes and asks you questions, I want to make sure that um, you feel comfortable and you feel supported enough to have those uh, conversations with them. So I designed a three-day workshop uh, August 3rd through the 5th of last year, and I designed it around a Harry Potter theme. So there were four groups for the four Hogwarts houses. Um, I did send out an information packet, and uh, I had it designed to look like an owl, you know, a Hogwarts acceptance letter, an owl dropped off your acceptance letter to your email. That information packet contained absolutely all of the information that would be needed to successfully complete the workshops. The workshops themselves consisted of only activities. I didn't lecture. I didn't stand there and, and talk. I didn't have slides. It was all games. Uh, so uh, either handouts or a cahoots quiz. The different activities then accumulated points towards the house cup. So there was a prize at the end. Each round, they would get small prizes that I got from Party City, the little goodie bag fillers. So slime, um, tic-tac-toe, things like that. And then towards the end, they got a bigger prize if they accumulated enough points. Um, I sorted groups randomly into the four houses via a sorting hat. And also at Party City, they sell um, bags of candy and it's all one color. So I got a bag each of a blue, red, yellow and green uh, gummy bear. And then I put it into black opaque goodie bags. So when they randomly grabbed a goodie bag and opened it up, if they had red, they were Gryffindor, yellow or Hufflepuff and so on. Uh, like I mentioned, the activities were based on the readings. So uh, you can see in one of the pictures up here, I have a Kahoot, um, and they're to fill in the blank with one of the multiple choice questions. Uh, other worksheets that I assigned were uh, assign the CC license to this type of material. Um, go into the OER repositories and look for a textbook for a theater class find a non-traditional material for a theater class, things like that, business class, so on and so forth. Uh, so like I mentioned, small prizes were awarded at the end of every round. And then the bigger prize, which I actually have um, right here, it's uh, the Felix Felicis. So a good luck charm 
uh, Angela and I made this, just a little mason jar with uh, water and paint and glitter. And as the good luck charm, it meant that someone from the losing team would complete an hour of their work. So um, an hour could be an hour doing a lip guide, um, an hour sitting at the reference desk, uh, very small tasks, nothing too out of their uh, scope. But so that was the bigger prize. Not only was there a prize involved, but there was risk involved. If you were on the losing team, you had to complete that task for the winning team. And that was an incentive. Uh, I did notice that the first day, the groups came in and were doing very poorly. And it's because they didn't read. They assumed that I would be going over the lecture or going over the information. Uh, I noticed that the second day when they came back, they had read the information and were very competitive, ready to play. Um, this is an example of uh, one of my slides. So uh, what does OER stand for? This was the very first question that they were asked. And then further on, uh, objections to OER. What are the resources that you have available to you? So again, another poll, um, how useful does OWLs sound based on your current needs? All right. Okay, awesome. I'm glad to see that it could be useful. I'm gonna go ahead and ask the next, the next question, which is how fun and engaging does this sound? Okay, so definitely the poll is skewing um, more to the right and to the fun side. Um, whereas we had a couple more on the left side uh, in the last one. So uh, thank you. Um, so we did notice that gamification played a part in this. Um, like I mentioned, uh, there was a risk and a reward. So you'll see that on the screen, the challenge reward. Um, whereas in STAR, there was no competition because they were all working on different syllabi. So we incorporated that competition aspect as well. Um, the four groups against each other, the user engagement. There was absolutely no room for anyone to not participate, to not ask questions or answer questions. They were all there working together. And because they were in a group, the group kept them accountable. Um, if someone didn't know the answer, they knew that someone else would know the answer, but that also brought in the competition. I want to be able to contribute to my group. I want to be able to be useful and help us win points, especially when there is a risk involved being on the losing team and having to give up an hour of my time. The achievement, um, we did reward them at the end of every round. So there was a running uh, point system that we had up on the screen. And then of course the big one at the end. Um, these Four, these five, I should say, achievement, engagement, competition, reward, and challenge, not all of them need to be there in order for something to be a game. I do want to mention that goal, learning, and skill should be a part of every professional development workshop. Um, we have something that we're working towards, definitely as professionals, 
of course, if we're giving this workshop, we want them to learn something and we want them to be able to demonstrate that skill at the end. So these three should be present in every single professional development workshop. But the bottom five, um, those could be mixed, matched. Um, maybe you use one aspect for one workshop and then another aspect for another workshop um, to really keep your, your staff uh, willing and ready to learn to make these first three happen. And so based on that, uh, those eight foundations, um, which of the five, you can select two, uh, which aspects would you most likely include in your next professional development workshop? I see engagement is is winning. That's awesome. For risk and reward, no one wants to <laughs> no one wants to lose. Um, I do want to mention that all of the supplies uh, purchased for the owls, I did go to my library director and ask for a budget to purchase the prizes, to purchase the food. Um, I decorated as well. I had balloons and streamers. Um, and so the prizes and the decorations were funded by the library. And I did um, submit a proposal as to how I would be using those funds. So if um, maybe something deterring you from providing a reward is a financial support, I would urge you to approach um, library admin and see if there's any room in the budget to provide a dynamic professional development workshop. So this is great. I see engagement is very much the clear winner. Um, some competition, the challenge definitely, and achievement, wonderful. Um, while STAR did have a place, it was not necessarily what our staff needed at the time. So what Angela did is she reinforced a process and she didn't necessarily introduce the process either. She very quickly skimmed it and then spent the bulk of the workshop having them do it themselves. That is what STAR did. I didn't, uh, reinforce any process in OWLS. What I did was introduce concepts in the packet and then reinforce the concepts through the gamification. Uh, I also didn't provide any targeted activities. It was all uh, pretty um, high, high level activities that um, everyone would be able to achieve regardless of what their subject specialty was or their role in the library. I also didn't necessarily provide an authentic learning experience. Because Angela provided actual syllabi that pertained to the librarian's subjects, um, they were able to get a feel for where they would actually look to help um, find that OER material or the zero cost material. Uh, as you can see, I also placed them in groups. Angela did not. Um, and also, there was an element of fun in the OWLs that STAR didn't provide. So our lessons learned, um, Angela planned the workshop with a different uh, objective in mind without really considering the needs of the staff. 
they needed to be introduced to concepts and have those reinforced and then spend a good chunk of time introducing the process. And that's why a year or two later, uh, staff wasn't demonstrating that knowledge of OER. It's because they had what I call a mental dump. You receive the information and then immediately dump it out of your brain. So um, what Angela learned was plan the workshop around the needs of the staff first. Once you have those needs addressed, then think about what are your objectives. Also, because she felt this was such a serious objective, a serious goal, that there was absolutely no room for her to be silly or incorporate any fun elements. And that turned out to be a detriment. Um, they needed that element of fun, of a light working environment in order to really uh, grasp the concepts. Um, my lesson learned during the OWLs, I did not enjoy using cahoots at all. Uh, it was probably uh, two, three weeks later that I discovered quizzes, which I have used pretty much exclusively since because I can integrate slides, polls, multiple choice, so on. Um, so I, and even now I'm still on the hunt for more innovative and engaging technology that's not going to cost me or the library an arm and a leg. Um, for now, I will keep looking for free technology, but if there comes a point where I find technology that is just, uh, it just surpasses everything else and there is a cost, um, I will be first seeing if my library will um, help out with the cost of that or if it's affordable if I could do it myself. But of course I would, uh, start with that proposal first. Uh, Angela and I created basically what kind of uh, workshop you would need. So uh, if you have a large group, large staff, um, and they're spread out over many departments, I would stay in the concepts area you want to introduce concepts and reinforce them so they can have those conversations uh, with their faculty. If you have many departments, depending on who's in or what departments are included in that, you might be able to introduce a process as well. Um, if you have a higher level team, SCALCOM, OER, uh, you can probably do more of the advanced, such as reinforcing concepts if you see a gap in any of them, and then start to introduce the process and reinforce the process of finding that OER. Um, if you're beginning your affordability journey, introducing the concepts uh, would be good, as well as introducing a process. So you can use this checkbox uh, or this graph, I should say, to help you decide what workshop is best for you and your needs of your staff. Um, and this should be a handout, but of course you can reach out to me and I'd be happy to share this with you, or I can even collaborate with you to develop one that uh, better suits your needs. So um, I do have my information on the screen. I also have Angela's information. Like I said, she is really sad she couldn't be here today. But if you have any questions about um, the STAR workshop, if you think that that's something that uh, would work really well for your team and where you are in your affordability journey on campus, she'd be more than happy to share that with you. Um, I'm also, uh, I've published my OWLS information packet as OER, and I'm happy to share that with you as well. So I know we have some time. Uh, are there any questions? Thank you, Tessie. So we're now reaching the Q&A uh, section of our presentation. So uh, please feel free to drop your questions into the chat.
All right, uh, Tessie, we have a question. Have you considered replicating the OWLS workshop for a faculty audience? How might you change it if so? Oh, that's a really good question, Ariana. Um, I actually haven't considered uh, replicating it for faculty. Um, I come from a family of uh, faculty and scholars. And one thing I've learned is faculty can sometimes be the worst students. And so I don't know if I want to um, put this type of workshop on for faculty. Um, I certainly have presented and included fun elements in my uh, in my education to faculty. I am a fan of memes, um, so I incorporate those. Uh, but gamification, I haven't. Um, but now that you've brought it up, I might look into that. So thank you for that question. All right, uh, Tessie, we have another question from Veronica. What suggestions do you have on how to balance the components of gamification so it's not too much of a distraction or overstimulating? Oh, that's a really great question. Thank you, Veronica. Um, I What I did is I um, did one off. So one virtual cahoots, multiple choice, fast paced, uh, timed. There was music involved and uh, it could get overstimulating. Um, I myself, when I'm very stressed, loud music, noises, it's too much. So I would do one round as a cahoots and then at least one round analog. So the worksheets, those were printed out. There was one answer sheet um, and I would play, uh, if you go on YouTube, you can find pretty much music for anything. And so I would play um, the common room ambient noises. So Gryffindor common room ambient noises, soft, relaxing. And so they weren't staring at a screen or a projector the whole time. There was that analog component of writing with a pencil on a worksheet. Um, if you feel like even that is still too overstimulating, um, you could incorporate your uh, lecture slides into it. So you, you're talking and they can absorb the information. So Tessie, we have another question. Um, the faculty from Africa, is there any possibility to participate in your workshops? I haven't done any international workshops. They've all been in person, so no virtual. Um, but if you would like to collaborate, I would definitely welcome that. You can certainly send me an email and we can work on something together. So, and don't apologize for registering or attending this. I'm so glad that, um, that you've joined us all the way from Africa. How wonderful. Most definitely. Any other questions for Tessie this afternoon? All right, Tessie, thank you so much for your presentation today. And thank you to all the participants who attended today's session. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and stop the recording. You all have a wonderful day.